if you're doing too much or too little, or you're doing something that's full of toxins, that's not good for you. And that could get you into a lot of problem. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. In this particular video, I want to get into a couple things around methylene blue, which is a drug. It's the oldest synthetic drug we believe in use still today. So it's been around a long, long time. And because of the internet and social media, you probably heard of methylene blue being used for all sorts of really good things. Things like uh, energy recovery, cell healing, lots of great benefits, you know, that it's being experimented with with damage from chemotherapy and other drugs. It's being experimented with a lot in the neurological community, etc. So there's lots of really good press about methylene blue out there, which is great. So the first thing is, if you're in the United States and probably, I'm pretty sure Canada and probably a number of other countries around the world, methylene blue is a legend substance, meaning it has to be prescribed. Okay. Now, this is where the rub comes. A couple of things that I just want to point out. One of the reasons to use the pharmaceutical system and one of the things that our drug system has built into it to the best degree it can is the safety of a molecule or a drug such as methylene blue when it goes into a human. So what's all this safety business? Well, there's different levels of quality of most chemicals. And this happens too, for example, people will say, well, why should I go to a doctor and get uh, injectable peptides? Because I can just order them on the internet. Well, there's same logic there, okay? Talk about peptides some other day, but methylene blue, same way. What's the biggest problem and why do I tell you I really think that you should work with a methylene blue aware practitioner and get it from a licensed, legitimate pharmacy? Two things. One is there are some people who shouldn't use methylene blue, such as people on certain serotonin manipulating drugs. There are cautions and dosing contraindications and ranges, etc., because it is a stimulant to your mitochondria, so you can get very over overstimulated if you overdo the methylene blue dose. So there's safety issues around that. And so if you work with a practitioner who knows what they're doing in methylene blue, then they can come in and they can say, okay, you're in the normal dose range, but you're a little overstimulated. We're going to back off. Or gee, we're not getting any results. So you're, you're maybe too low for your body size in the dose range. Let's raise it up or let's modulate your dose. Okay. So there's safety issues there, but then there's product, drug issues. So the reason I don't really advocate anybody, uh, number one, it's a drug, so it would be technically illegal, but there are differences between the purity and the safety of the, the drug grade versus all of the other grades. What is commonly sold on the internet is called reagent grade, which means if I'm doing lab experiments or are, you know, using it as a dye or some other thing, I might use reagent grade, okay? That's what that's made for. That's totally fine, right? If I'm going to use it in a human or even in an animal situation, okay, I want the purest, cleanest version, which is not reagent grade, and there is big differences. So what are some of those differences? One would be the dose strength equation for that particular product and the reliability that this batch that you get and the next batch that you get are going to have the same uh, dose strength per whatever volume you're using whatever way you're using it, okay? That comes in the pharmaceutical world and it comes from quality control testing. The next thing, which is even bigger safety-wise, is as video, it's full of heavy metals. And you can get a lot of heavy metal toxicity from reagent grade methylene blue. And then even in the pharmacy community, in, in what's called the United States Pharmacopeia USP grade, you have to make sure that the pharmacy who buys the stuff is showing you the certificate of analysis to say, yes, this is a very, you know, there's nothing that doesn't have toxins in it, but this is a very low heavy metal product. Because if you take and you get low grade uh, drug versions from other countries sometimes, or you get reagent grade, they're going to be a lot of heavy metals. And here's one of the things that you need to consider. You're putting this stuff, let's say your doctor has it for you, putting it in there to help your mitochondria work. 
some of the biggest mitochondrial toxins are the same heavy metals that come in the cheaper grades, the reagent grades of methylene blue, which are never meant to be used as medicines. So it's not just that you're trying to support the pharmacy industry there, but it's that you want purity and you don't want all those uh, heavy metals that normally come in it and you want dose regularity. So let's say I'm taking, you know, X number of milligrams. I want each batch per, let's say, trochee or whatever I'm taking it in to uh, have the same number of milligrams in it, right? So it makes no sense to take a product, the cheaper, the reagent grade, methylene blue, that are full of heavy metals that are going to attack your mitochondria, which you're trying to speed up, okay? Now, what are these grades? So reagent grade is used for, like I said, you can use it for, you know, non-experimental purposes as a dye. You can use it for experimental purposes, like in Petri dishes and stuff like that, but it will have a certain amount of toxicity. Don't toxify yourself with cheap stuff. Now, what's the other thing I've seen? I've done a lot of looking and there's pharmacy grade grade labels and you get down and you look at the certificate of analysis or you look at the fine print, it's not pharmacy grade. It's reagent grade. And so I've had people comment, well, USP, and I'd say it's pharmacopoeia, then it should be fine. Okay. Not always. These things, especially the stuff you can buy on the internet are not always labeled correctly. And if you do a little digging, you'll find that out. Now, occasionally you'll find a USP source. It'll be one of these cheaper sources that's still full of heavy metals. So there again, what does adding the compounding pharmacy do for you? They legally have to verify their product. They have to verify the quality control and that it's not full of heavy metals. And they have to be able to tell you about that. So that's what that's about. So there's USP, United States Pharmacopeia grade, and you want a pharmacy using the best grade they can, not some off-brand thing that they test and is full of metals, which are going to toxify you. Reagent grade is everything else, and there's thousands, thousands of people I'm sure out there taking and mixing up their own with that. Just know that you're very likely giving yourself a lot of heavy metals along with that, which is why I don't recommend that. Okay. So it literally could make you sicker, right? The other thing, as I mentioned, beyond the pharmacy being in the middle and having to do quality control and check that it's not full of toxicity and getting regular doses. So each time I buy, you know, a box of trochies or each time I buy drops or whatever I'm buying, I'm going to have the same dose strength on each dose, right? That's very important. And then the other thing is just working with a healthcare provider, like I say, who is aware of how to dose methylene blue, but but more importantly, when you shouldn't get it, such as being on certain serotonin drugs and a few other things. And what do I do when you're having no reaction or too much reaction? That's the clinical management of it. And so you had a lot of people comment and say, well, I don't need a doctor looking over my shoulder and all this. Maybe you don't. But one of the things is this is not an innocuous drug. Methylene blue is a very, very potent drug, potent at the core level of your metabolism. And so if you're doing too much or too little, or you're doing something that's full of toxins, that's not good for you. And that could get you into a lot of problem. It'd be the same as, you know, me telling you, well, you could probably go online and find a source to buy any other drug, right? That doesn't mean that whatever you bought, number one, has had any quality control. And number two, should be managed without somebody who is a healthcare provider helping you out. Well, I hope that this answers some of those questions about why I'm so specific about number one, it's a drug. Number two, there should be a healthcare provider who knows what they're doing with it so you don't get in trouble. And number three, it should be as pure as possible and come from a pharmacy that can verify its quality. That's why those things are so very important. 